He has his mindset after the election because people believe some bookmakers have said that uh, Vice President Namadi Sambo does not really have that clout in from his base in the Northwest. That he doesn't really have that uh, rallying potential to uh, be a political advantage for President Gulab Jonathan. So how do you see his decision to pick uh, Vice President Namadi Sambo as his running mate? Well, the, the Americans have an expression, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, this was a winning team in 2011. Um, I think it will be a winning team in 2015. Now, uh, we're, we're seeing a renewal of old rivalry, like I earlier mentioned, and uh, General uh, Muhammad Buhari will be running against uh, President Kulok Jonathan. And when you look at the convention of the APC, uh, people, it has attracted a lot of praise because of the peaceful conduct and also because it, they, they opened the party space for candidates to contest. And people have dubbed it the beauty of democracy. Uh, Considering that of the PDP, in which uh, people uh, affirmed President Gulag Jonathan, and we also have reports that some were actually intimidated out of the race. So how would you compare both parties' uh, internal democracy? I, I, haven't, I haven't heard that um, anyone was intimidated out of the race in the PDP. But the, the fact that uh, he is uh, coming unopposed, how would you compare that to uh, an APC where we saw five uh, strong heavyweights contesting against each other. I mean, there, there are two there are two paradigms, if you like. Um, the, you could have in 2011, President Jonathan uh, contested against um, one of the candidates who happens to now be contesting in the APC, um, and he won. In 2015, the party on all the all the other people who might have wanted to contest felt that President Jonathan is our best. Um, bet in the 2015 election, and that's that's a completely acceptable. It's democratic. Well, is the affirmation primaries a true test of President Gulag Jonathan's popularity? Is is what? Because is is it a true test of President Gulag Jonathan's popularity? Because people believe that the internal democracy, the party convention, is to set the stage for a litmus test of the candidate's popularity. Well, there We've wasn't there that. wasn't any dissent within the party, so I mean, I think that's the best evidence of uh, popularity. If there's no dissent. If, if all the, um, whether governors... And you, you don't pres see presidential, presidential, presidential primaries are usually made up of, if there's an incumbent president, um, then the president, the incumbent president, uh, governors, um, people who've uh, attained a certain stature, senators would be, the same thing in other federations. Um, and if, if you don't have any dissent amongst the, that class of people who might otherwise have contested, then I think one can only assume... Um, that they're, they're happy to present President Jonathan as the candidate, and that's what you, we you have. You just raised the incumbency factor now, and um, bookmakers are seeing that as a big point for the PDP. Did you see the incumbency factor playing out in this, uh, in this setting? Because uh, in this scenario, we, looking at the APCs, the way it has conducted itself now, uh, you can see people have said that that shows a genuine desire for change. So now, how do you see the incumbency factor playing out in this kind of circumstance, come 2015 elections? Well, incumbency is what it is. I mean, the president is president, and he's, he's running, as I said, he's going to run on his record. Uh, when the campaign starts in earnest, he's going to be running on his record. And as I was saying, uh, there, there's, there is a good record to show. Uh, let, let, let's be clear. When you say incumbency factor, people are talking about uh, the, the fact that he has uh, a, a control of the instrument of power and, uh, and the federal might at its disposal. Well, President Jonathan hasn't uh, displayed the, the uh, tendency towards using unfair means. Um, he's opened the space. INEC is independent. I mean, it used to be NEC, and I, I was amused when it was changed to INEC just by putting the word independent. But it has proved, Pro Professor Jagger has proved to be an independent person. Look at the elections in Ekiti State and Oshun State. PDP won one, APC won the other. I mean, nobody's complaining about the outcomes of either in real terms. So I, I think that um, he is an incumbent, but he's an incumbent president who has allowed the democratic space to open up and to deepen by having a viable opposition. Let me also take you up on the PVC controversy. Uh, many, some states that have, um, have not gotten their permanent voter card uh, they are saying that uh, many of the states 
happened to fall under a, an APC-controlled state. And they're saying that it's a PDP gimmick to disenfranchise the APC from its stronghold. How do you see such comments? And how do you see the fact, the reality on ground, that the INEC is still grappling with the issue of permanent voter cards? I, I think it's just politics. Um, I said, um, INEC has, I think, established its independence. Professor Jagger has shown his credibility in, in, in elections. It's amusing that the people should be, APC should be saying this now. Because I recall when I was in government, I remember people saying that Professor Jagger was likely to be biased against, in favor of CPC at that time, um, simply because he was, he was from the North. And people didn't trust that he would um, be fair to President Jonathan. He's proved to be independent. So I think if there are some problems and issues over the distribution of permanent voters' cards, I mean, those are challenges that I'm sure Professor Jagger is dealing with. Yeah, like I said earlier on, uh... Mr. Henry Odion Ajikmogobia is a man of many parts, and I'm also going to take him up on one of his uh, colors on his coat of many colors, and uh, that's being a lawyer. Um, the issue of um, the recent fracas that happened at the National Assembly where, and has led to a point where they, we have seen the IG refusing to recognize the status of Alaji Aminu Tambuwal as, as a speaker. What should be the situation? What should be the legal outlook, the legal in interpretation of that kind of circumstance? I mean, my, the matter is in court, um, and I think the IG's uh, position is that because the matter is in court, um, he's not taking a position one way or the other. Um, I think the Constitution is very clear. The Speaker is appointed or elected by his peers in, in the House of Representatives and uh, by a two-third majority. That's what happened. He can only be removed by his peers by a two-third majority. Um, and I think that speaks for itself. So, the um, Constitution doesn't say that you must be from the ruling party or you can choose. If, if, if I were a member of the House of Representatives and I, I, had, only, I had only one seat, um, I was the only from a, some mush, um, sort of fringe party. We'll also talk about the PDP primaries in River State. So just a short one there. Uh, the PDP primaries in River State have come and gone. Um, I was an aspirant. Um, I did not participate in the primaries um, because I felt they were not in a, a appropriately conducted. I'm in court challenging the outcome and the eligibility of one of the, uh, of the person that won the primaries. Um, so that's, uh, it's not over. You may send your comments on our different social media platforms showing on your screen. 